What up, people? It's your boy, Master Chewy, out here with another movie review. So, you know, I took a couple, I took a week off, you know, get myself right, do some other work and whatnot. But, you know, I didn't think uh, this would come out, but yesterday, uh, the new animated movie for Mortal Kombat came out. It's supposedly supposed to come out tomorrow, but I guess it was leaked early. So I had the opportunity to watch it. And, you know, um, through others, other videos, um, watching the video games and whatnot, I've really gotten into the Mortal Kombat lore. Um, best person to really inform you about Mortal Kombat lore is the Force Snake. Of course, I've been really watching his videos, getting updated about the other stuff. I know last year I watched the 90s animated series of Mortal Kombat, just one season. That's all it was, and, you know, really got into it. I thought it was pretty good. So, I decided to watch this movie, of course, because I was because the trailer really impressed me. And I have to say that this film does not fail its trailer. It exceeds it. It's very good. Very, very good. And you see certain callbacks to Mortal Kombat. But as you know, this is Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge. And as you can tell from the story, this is about basically, more or less, a blend of the first Mortal Kombat tournament with Scorpion seeking revenge for... Uh, the death of his family and the Shirai Ryu um, by the false impersonation of Sub Zero and the Lin Kuei. <clears throat> but as you can guess, um, basically Scorpion is killed. He goes to the Nether Realm. Quan Chi, who is in this film, offers Scorpion a chance for his revenge if he works for him, and so Scorpion accepts. And so, of course, we go to the Mortal Kombat uh, tournament. Um, and it goes as usual, their fights, defeat Shang Tsung, defeat his champion Goro, and you win. Um, but there are some certain twists to it. So um, there will be, I would say there are spoilers, but you know, most of you kind of know of Scorpion's story at this point who are very interested. Um, so I'm going to get into the, uh, the characters, of course. So um, we have Liu Kang, and uh, Liu Kang is. Um, you know, he's not there, but his character is as you would expect. You know, training for the Mortal Kombat it was with um, Raiden, who comes to see him, saying that you have to compete. And, you know, he's just there to fight Goro. And when he um, doesn't necessarily have much of a... I don't want to say... To say that he doesn't have character is a little bit harsh, but, you know, he's really just there. And, of course, since it's called Scorpion's Revenge, uh, the focus is not really on Liu Kang. But he's as Liu Kang as you could expect him. Humble... Um, he knows his destiny, and he listens to the wisdom of Raiden and whatnot. So Liu Kang doesn't drag this story down. He does add flavor to it, but he doesn't really move the story, per se, as you'd expect. It seems to be equally spread. Next character, of course, is Scorpion. And uh, Scorpion is well done. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the voice. The voice actor, of course, for Scorpion was very good. Very much liked it. Um, he was brutal. He was relentless. His rage was incredible. Uh, yeah, this is what you would expect from a scorpion. He showed no mercy. And I'll get into the brutality of the movie later on in the review, but it was fantastic as well. Uh, we then get into uh, Raiden. Raiden is also, you know, pretty much there, the spectator, as he was most, as he pretty much was in Mortal Kombat One, the 1995 movie. That's where I see a lot of this Raiden. Um, in this movie, taking its inspiration from. And, you know, he's cool, and he has his wisdom, and, you know, his conversation with Scorpion, which mirrors MK9's conversation about, hey, don't work for Quan Chi, don't be consumed by revenge, and whatnot, even though he doesn't offer his family back. He just says, hey, there's another way. You always have a choice. Okay. We get on. Um, the next one is uh, Johnny Cage, which... Interestingly enough, he gets a lot in this movie. I mean, sure, you think that they kind of do him dirty, but it's really to build his character, and it's pretty. It's done pretty well. You know, he's, instead of being like uh, an actor who's looking for better roles, I mean, he still is. This time, he's kind of down on his luck. He's still living technically well, but he's getting like eviction notices from his mansion. And, you know, he's looking to take any job. And, of course, um, unlike the movie... <laughs> Unlike the movie where he knows that he's competing in a tournament, 
just not the degree, he takes from the MK9 version where he's like, hey, this is my, this is, uh, this is real. Like, oh my gosh, I'm competing in a tournament. Oh my gosh, this is Mortal Kombat. I could die. Um, he brings a lot of much needed levity to the, um, to the um, movie, which is very welcome. This, with all the gore and the seriousness. Um, it's funny because um, when he's with Sonya Luke Cage and Scorpion, they're like about to kill each other. <laughs> and Johnny's like, wait, he talks to Luke Cage, did you declare Mortal Kombat? He's like, no. Did, he talks to Sonya, did you declare Mortal Kombat? No. And he talks to Scorpion, did you declare Mortal Kombat? He's like, no. It's like, yeah, so we don't have to kill each other. That was very sensible and everything like that. So I really like Johnny Cage in this movie. And the final scene where he helps Sonya out when she's outnumbered, where he's just fighting, was uh, magnifique. Very good, indeed. Really enjoyed it. We get to Sonya. Now, I, now Sonya's character, um, I don't think it was bad. I think there's some things that you be grading with her where you roll, where you roll her eyes. You're like, oh, yeah, this is, this is in the 1950s. I said, well, I mean, Liu Kang, Liu Kang wanted to help her out. And then, yes, he did underestimate her but there's a better way to uh, do it but there was one scene where you know she's street fighting in uh china and she's like um you know she's getting beat down and you know in the street fight, this guy's saying like this isn't a place for little girls now i was watching this and i immediately thought of captain marvel from last year but what's different and what's interesting is that it shows sonya blade you know um uh, the person who repeats that is actually Jax, and he's in this movie, and he kind of he's kind of there. They, they they punish my man's, <laughs> but, I, but I'll get into that later. But Jax is like saying, "Hey, this is no place for little girls," and he wasn't like speaking directly to Sonya per se. He was speaking to his whole you know training platoon because he was her, he's his uh, command. He is her commanding officer. So Sonya snickers and he's like, "Oh, you think this is funny? Say I'm going to put you through all the hell." And Sonya's like, I'm going to be the best cadet and trainee you've ever had. And he's like, okay, we'll see about that. And so you see that she's out there training. She's getting pushed. She's always saying that she always has something to prove, basically. And, you know, it's good to see that. You know, she's um, she's very much a flawed character, way headstrong. This is probably the most headstrong Sonya I've ever seen, where she doesn't give a damn. She'll rush into battle thinking that she has the upper hand. And in some of the cases, she really does. But she can be beaten. Badly, even, <laughs> even so. But we get to see her really progress as a character, and we get to, um, you know, she's a, she's a rough but very likable. And she did what? She did the whole montage scene better than Captain Marvel. That's just my opinion. Um, Shang Tsung, or Shang Tsung, basically. I really like what they did with him. Like, he was a presence, and of course, he's overseeing the Mortal Kombat. Um, tournament, and you know, the same thing with Quan Chi, I'm going to compare the both of them because they're very much intertwined. So yeah, Quan Chi um, is very much very evil in this, you know, it's not bad at all, and you love to hate him. Shang Tsung is very devious and mischievous, and he has a plan, he has no mercy for anybody, and um, and uh, basically, um, what's interesting enough is that what I've noticed is that a lot of people in the recent <laughs> iterations of Shang Tsung don't like how he's always, like, how should I say, screwed over, to put in a very mild term. But in this case, like, you know, Quan Chi was about to betray my mans because he was there for Nether Realm, because he was there to, of course, free Shinnok, because Shinnok is in an amulet, mind you, much like in MKX. They borrow a lot from MK9 and MKX slightly. Not a lot, but you, you if they were looking at video games to take from, it's from MK9 and MKX. So, um, Quan Chi was about to poison Shang Tsung. And Shang Tsung is like, you see this? And while Goro is beating on Liu Kang in the final, ra- in the final round, he's like saying, ah, Quan Chi, this is how you know to, to uh, contemplate victory. You always have to be one step ahead of your opponents. And my man just pours out a poison drink that Quan Chi gave him. And Quan Chi's like, oh, dang. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and he's like, did you really think I didn't see your treachery? And so he just screws up my man Quan Chi like that, which I thought was a refreshing case. And, of course, uh, Quan Chi could fight very well. But like I said, he was just very evil, and he's the guy that you love to hate. Uh, we had, uh, you know, small... 
here and there cameos um, here and there. You know, Kano was in it, of course. Reptile was in it. Uh, Baraka was in it. Uh, Jax is probably the largest cameo. He does some things. Of course, you had Goro as well. You see um, one last cameo, of course, from Shao Kahn. Because as you know, Liu Kang wins the uh, tournament. I'll explain that later. And of course, Shang Tsung has to retreat. And Shao Kahn is like, okay, we got to get ready for invasion. Which borrows, of course, from MK2 in the MK9 storyline, however you want to see it. So we'll get to the things that I did like a lot. One, uh, just the devotion to the video game mechanics and the brutality. Now, the first 10 minutes of this movie was completely brutal. Like, and, and it doesn't really let up, but the first 10 minutes, it's like a case of its own. Like, Scorpion just massacres the Lin Kuei that attacked his, um, they attacked the Shirai Ryu, almost all of them except uh, Sub-Zero, who's of course Quan Chi in disguise. Oh, I forgot to mention that Bihan, the first Sub-Zero, makes an appearance, and of course Scorpion kills him as per the game recently in Netherrealm games. But anyway, back to what I was saying. The brutality, yeah, Scorpion just massacres them all, and they, they don't hold back. They're very gratuitous in their gore. Decapitations, crushing everything. The fatal blows and the x-rays are very much like from the Netherrealm games. You see that quite a lot, and they hold nothing back. That was very interesting. That was like, yeah, you are in you are in Mortal Kombat, and we don't hold back. That's the thing. Also, forgot to mention Katana makes a cameo in this as well. And, and, her, and I'll get to that now. Um, the second thing I liked were the fights. Uh, the fights were very good. Um, I don't. I have to say that the fight between Scorpion and Quan Chi, which is the which was the ultimate fight, was fantastic. It was well done. Choreography was magnificent. Um, Sonia versus Reptile was another very good fight, indeed. Um, it was very nice. Um, Katana versus Liu Kang, you know, pretty pretty standard, but great fight. Uh, Johnny Cage versus Baraka was more of like a uh, like a runaway type of fight, which um, of course required a lot of wit, and which of course you know Johnny Cage won, but. Um, some of the some of the brutality as well. You had Jax versus Goro, and I'll get into that later. That was very brutal, but you, we all know how that ended, unfortunately. So yeah, the fights were very good. The choreography was very good. Get to the plot. Uh, the plot I thought was pretty good. But they tried new things. It was straightforward. It moved well, and this is a good. It was a good plot. I really liked it. It kept me engaged, and as well as other things that were visually there because you see Mortal Kombat. While um, what I've learned from watching a lot of videos, while there's very good, while the lore is very good, it's the brutality in the fights that grab the people's attention most of all, and that's probably been a mistake for recent games, where it's all the look at this, no matter what our content is story wise. But in this case, it works beautifully, and the plot also works fine. Uh, Another thing I liked are the slight changes to the film from the games and the usual lore. You had uh, yeah, back at it again. Sorry, I had to do something. But yeah, um, there are certain changes to the games that were made or to the story that deviated a bit from the games. For example, uh, how the way Jax lost his arms. So Jax fights Goro, and Goro <laughs> straight up rips my man's arms off completely. It was extremely brutal, and um, it did very well to showcase the mentorship between Jax and Sonya, because Sonya was just devastated, completely devastated. Man lost his arms, man. In addition, um, you had uh, Jax was the... Uh, while Johnny Cage and Sonya beat Kano, it, it was Jax who just killed my man <laughs> with his feet. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, and all that. I did like um, 
it, I did like the little deviations from the game. For example, um, Shang Tsung kind of, you know, outsmarting Quan Chi, even though people wouldn't consider that a deviation more of a usual expected and right thing to showcase. And in addition to that, you had um, Quan Chi get killed, Reptile get killed, Baraka get killed, and Kano get killed. Kind of the outworld uh, infantrymen <laughs> get obliterated, so none of them are left alive. Um, interestingly enough, the way that the f- tournament goes to Earthworm is that uh, Goro was beating on Liu Kang, but then Scorpion kills Goro, saves Liu Kang. Um, Scorpion, you know, accepts a fight. If he gets Quan Chi and kills him, Shang Tsung says, yeah, you can I can fight for me, and I can give you Quan Chi, and then you can get anything you want. But then, of course, um, Scorpion basically betrays Shang Tsung and threatens him, tells him to release, uh, to release um, the amulet, and he basically says that, hey, I yield to Liu Kang. So Earthworm wins, Shang Tsung loses, and of course, he goes ahead and he kills Quan Chi very early in the game, which I think is, um, you know, a nice welcome touch. Um, it, it was just well done. Uh, all these little twists and surprises really makes this its own um, thing, which I think is very good. So that's it. So I say that um, the characters are good. The plot was good. The little deviations from MK lore, also good. So we'll get to the one thing that might be against this film, which I still don't think it's against, but um, it might be against it. The gore in this film can be very distracting, <laughs> extremely distracting. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's intense, and it can sometimes take you out. I mean, even I had to pause it a bit to just, you know, compose myself. I mean, I wasn't that taken aback, but I was, at times I was like, dang, man, that's too much. But that's neither here nor there. So, but it doesn't really take away from the, some of the film. And the way that the things are set up, I'm very interested if they do hopefully make a sequel to this. Um, they really did set up a sequel to this because, as he, as I said in the end, um, Shang Tsung returns to Outworld, inform Shao Kahn of what happened, and Shao Kahn is like, get the boys ready, we're hitting up Invasion. So, yeah. So, I really enjoyed this movie. I think it's a very good Mortal Kombat movie. Um, I'm always of the impression that so far with DC, and um, now with Mortal Kombat, their content, in many ways, works better as um, very um, PG-13 at the least to rated R animation. Um, works for their lore. Very good. Um, I would recommend watching this. It's a good film. And I give this a... I give this um, a 9 out of 10. I think it was that good. I, I may seem generous, but I was very much impressed. So, thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notifications, and hit that bell to make sure you receive notifications. Once again, I do these reviews for you, the people, because I want to discuss good movies like this, and get your views on them. Thank you all for watching, and hope to have more videos up when I can. Peace.